Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Droid Life Show. We are now in episode seven. Can you believe it? Uh, we've got the Droid Life team here. I'm Kellen. We also have Eric, Ron, and Tim. Why don't you guys say hi? Hello, hello. Hey. Yo. So, as always, decent show ahead of us. Um, even with the long holiday weekend, there's still been enough stuff going on that we have plenty to talk about. Uh, you know, we're going to talk about Next 4 a little bit and the new broken back of mine. Um, talk about the LCD chip. Yeah, rest in peace. Uh, how about the Nexus 4 sale that went down yesterday and the issues? Galaxy Note 2 is coming out tomorrow, finally on Verizon. Um, I have a DNA in my hand, so we'll talk about that a little bit. Tim has a Spectrum 2, which we were laughing a little bit about before we went on air. We got some favorite apps to do. <laughs> Eric's still obsessed with Ingress. And we have a Windows Phone 8 update, all kinds of stuff. So let's get going. Um, let's just get this, and let's get this right out of the way. I have, as you all know, a Nexus 4. And I don't know if we can see this or not. No, it's not really showing up on there. But uh, I cracked it. So last week we did our, we did a special early Wednesday episode right before Thanksgiving. And I was on air bragging about, I haven't broken it yet. It's so awesome. And... Literally, like, two hours later, I'm in the kitchen preparing much stuff for my Thanksgiving feast for the next day, and I'm playing with the Nexus 4. I'm setting it down on my counter, off and on, off and on. And I pick it up later on that evening, and it's got this giant crack through it. So I guess the, the, way, it, the way it worked was it was in my hand, nice and warm, set it down on my stone countertop, Oh, obviously colder, and the temperature just cracked it. That's, wow. all, that's all I can think. And so I'm assuming that's also what happened to my Optimus G. Um, also, apparently from sliding my device around a little bit on my counter, it now has scratches all over it. And, and, and like, before we just rag on my stone countertop, like, it's actually pretty smooth. <laughs> I mean, I put a lot of phones down on this thing and had no problems. So it definitely – I mean, I was concerned before about the glass back on this thing. I'm really concerned about it now. Like, I ordered another one, and we'll talk about that in a second, just because, like, this thing's so ugly. But when I get a new one, like, I'm going to baby the thing. I might even put one of those ugly bumpers on it. I'm, I'm nervous that in, like, a month when everyone that actually plays the next four order gets theirs, we're just going to have literally, like, forum posts just flooded with broken backs. I'm scared. I've never seen anything like this. I mean, have you guys ever had a phone that scratched really easily or broke really easily without actually dropping it or throwing it? I mean, I, I seriously just set this down on a countertop and it cracked. It's called the uh, it's called the iPhone, Kellen. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but uh, <laughs> those things had a tendency to do that as well. Right. So how how does Google? Well, I guess it's not Google. This is LG's product, right? They built it. Google said, "Yeah, that's awesome." How did they not learn from the iPhone four? I mean, I, I wrote this up briefly, a big opinion piece about how there's like an entire industry now dedicated to replacing iPhone back glass, and you can even replace it with like metal and all these other materials and stuff like that. How, how did they not learn? I think that's. I mean, that's the interesting thing about it is, you know, there's been there've been a lot of obviously you had your own experience, but there's also been a bunch of other stories of people saying like, I literally have no idea how the back cracked. I didn't drop it. Nothing. Mm -hmm. um, those are not the same stories that you hear from iPhone owners. They drop theirs and it shatters. You know, like every single time, I've never mm -hmm. ever seen somebody say, Oh, I don't know how it happened. Everybody always knows, Yeah, I was an idiot and I dropped it. Mm -hmm. So I, there's got to be. I, I mean, as far as far as I know, it's also Gorilla Glass, and the iPhone was had Gorilla Glass on both sides. So I, I think there's got to be something else going on there with either the way that they do the glass, if it's if it's not Gorilla, if it's something else, or, or the, the design of it, because. Uh, for free to just set it down for the, the temperature kind of thing. Like, I mean, you, I think you even have a you have an iPhone four, don't you, Kellen? No, I don't. No. Okay. I thought you had one on you, but um, I mean, I've seen I've seen plenty of people. I mean, obviously, we all know plenty of people with iPhones that you know setting them down on something, even with temperature change. I mean, the change from your hand to that stone countertop can't be that drastic. Right. Uh, to do that, so there's there's something else going on there, I think, because otherwise, I think we see a lot more stories about that happening with other glass back and even, and even glass front phones where people, you know, are setting down the front as well yeah, on top well, of that. Well, yeah, and that's another thing is when you, when you set your, the front of your phone down, like I said, I've set the front of my phone, other phones down on there, like all the time, never had a problem. And there, and even the front phone, front of this, because like I said, the front's all scratched up now. So clearly I was setting the front down on there too and had no problems. It, it's weird. And, and when I when it happened to me twice, I was like, maybe I'm just an idiot. And But then I went and was like, 
cruising through XDA and there's like this forum thread that's like 30 pages long and the first like five pages is everyone going oh no mine's fine I don't know what everyone's talking about and then like everyone's had it for a few days and all of a sudden it just changes and there's like this wave of people like well I got a scratch here well there's a little crack here well there's a little nick here and it just kind of goes on and on so it's kind of a scary thing um, I mean it sounds like a good idea you know what's classier than having glass on the front end of the black right. your phone but it just people, it happens, you know. I was sitting in front of a class the other day, and I was, some girl across the hall was talking to her friend and said she was on her fifth iPhone of the year because Jeez. they had all just, the glass had cracked on every single one of them. Use a bumper case for the love of God. <laughs> like, come on, like, let's invest, instead of, you know, breaking your phone over and over, let's invest in maybe a good case. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's well, ridiculous. Well, if I, Yeah. Well, and, and in the comments of that post I wrote about the glass back, a lot of people are like, buy a case, idiot, you know? And then, like, I've never had to buy a case before. Right, I don't that's the thing. Phones. Yeah. I don't want to cover it up. The, the phone's beautiful. I don't want to feel like I have to cover it up just to preserve the damn thing. Yeah, and I've, I've got friends that have iPhones that use it without a case, and, you know, you, you don't drop it, it doesn't break. So, I mean, and, this, and it's going to be the same. I mean, everybody always has the drop test for every single phone. If you drop it on the glass side, it's going to break no matter what, so... You know, unless you put it in like some crazy one of the OtterBox crazy, you know, in two minutes that can't do anything with it. So, yeah, it's unfortunate. I mean, hopefully, I'm I'm a fluke and I'm the rare case. I don't know that that's going to be the case, but hopefully. All right, let's move on out of there and talk about the Nexus sale that went down yesterday. So, as everyone knows, um, the Nexus Four sold out on day one within like 25 minutes or something crazy like that, and then it was just sold out for the last two weeks. You couldn't order it pre-order it, back order it, you couldn't do anything. And the Google announced, I believe it was Monday, they said tomorrow we're gonna have more on sale at noon Pacific, get ready, it's gonna be awesome. So noon Pacific rolls around and actually I think it was like, it went live like five minutes early as usual. It always does. Doesn't it? And and so the, the world flooded the site again and it crashed and crashed and crashed. And I documented my sort of comical um, experience with it and you know Google thought I was a spam box because I was refreshing so much and all this stuff uh, but then Google finally updated their site to say we're not sold out heavy traffic bear with us um, and that lasted for hours I mean we were talking about this again briefly before the show and it took me I want to say like four hours before I was actually able to buy one and I had to do this trick that all of our readers were saying where they just said hammer on the proceed button and just keep hammering and hammering and hammering and hammering and finally it'll let you go through. And I tried it for like an hour doing that. I just couldn't get it to go through. And then finally at four o'clock, I think the traffic died down a little bit. I did get through. And you know, the now that it's like four to five weeks out before you can get one for the 16 gig and the eight gig one's like eight to nine weeks out. So you're at least a month out before you're going to get one of these. I'd just love to hear your guys' thoughts on the whole sales process and like obviously I'm disappointed it was frustrating for me and, and I don't you guys didn't I don't think you guys tried to order one but looking on from the outside like is it bad I, I feel like Google totally screwed up well we were talking about this uh, like a couple shows ago about this is the difference between Google and Apple and when Apple announces something they say alright it's gonna be up on our website and you know it generally works but every time Google has anything that's remotely popular, it just blows up. You know, I I didn't get a ticket to Google I.O. this year because uh, the exact same reason, so. Yeah, I mean, Apple definitely does have issues. Um, I follow a couple of Apple bloggers on Twitter, so in the last, you know, when every iPhone comes out, you know, there are complaints here and there. But I think another thing, too, that maybe we haven't considered with the whole ordering process is that Apple has carrier partners that people also go to to their websites. That's true. And Google's only got one site, so there's, a, there's definitely another downfall to not partnering with carriers for that in that aspect of it. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> I guess it just it seems like they should have maybe learned from the last time after such a disaster uh, after that disaster. And uh, like I said, this thing seemed like it took hours. I mean, if if you sat there at four o'clock and you were still trying to buy one, you could add it to your cart without issue. And But then every time you clicked proceed to try to buy it, you just kept getting this yellow air, yellow. And I don't know how late it went. Once I finally bought one at 4.30 or whatever it was, I just gave up and didn't bother looking at it again. But it just seemed like it went on far too long. The, the, luck, the nice thing is you can still order them, I guess. Yeah. 
And it could, it could also be, too, this is something else that maybe we haven't thought through enough either, but, I mean, when you think back to when they were selling, I mean, the only one, the Nexus One was the original, and I don't think a lot of people bought those. I, I mean, I see them once in a while, but it's pretty rare. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's also, I mean, Google is not necessarily constantly selling a very hot, you know, piece of, you know, piece of equipment. So, I mean, that's, the site obviously didn't go down when the Nexus Q went up, things like that. So, I mean, uh, that uh, also could I mean they could be just dealing with massive amounts of traffic that they haven't really anticipated before because Nexus devices haven't been that big of a hit. The thing to me is, like, if you go to Google search, there's got to be at least three times as many people in the world searching something on Google servers than there were trying to buy a Nexus 4 yesterday, and there you never have any hiccups with their Google search. I don't know why they can't put their muscle, you know, that they have with those servers behind their you know, where they're hosting their Play Store. Yeah. Maybe it's the software they're using. I don't know what company they're using to do their whole ordering service, but maybe whatever that software, maybe it's just awful and it can't handle yeah. load or something like that. They're probably doing it themselves. I would, App, I would hope so, right? Yeah, Apple has a patent on good software for sales systems <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> anyway. Remember what happened with the Nexus 7 launch? When the initial Nexus 7 launch at I.O., does anyone remember what happened then? I don't remember if the site crashed or if it was fine or not. It, I don't, I don't um, think there was no crashing. No, I mean, anytime there's a product launch, you have, like, delays and stuff like that. I don't think it yeah, the Nexus 7, it, it worked well, but everybody ordered one, and then they, like, emailed everybody back and said, sorry, it's going to be, like, two months. Right, which is the same thing. I mean, when the, when the touchpad had a fire sale, same thing happened. Yeah. That's right, just overloaded. I, I hope the next time it happens, you know, they, they do it right. But, I mean, with I.O. for what, like two or three years straight now, we've had similar problems. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's part of the problem. You know, like Eric, you said, like, why don't you throw some more servers behind it and that kind of thing. But it's, it's really a rare instance where they're getting that much traffic. You've got things like I.O. and a brand yeah. new phone launch, and that's it. Google's getting hammered for search stuff constantly. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, sure. you know, trying to allocate that server stuff, I mean, I imagine it's got to be difficult. I mean, Google does have the money to just throw and say, hey, we're going to buy a bunch of servers just for that, but it still it takes a lot of organization and coordination. But I think it would be worth the public image to put some money behind that, to, to yeah. not have every single launch that you do just explode in your face. I think it would be worth the money to get something that goes a little bit smoother. But that's just me. Possibly, or you can just spin it and say, "Look at how much traffic we have. Look how many people want to have our phone." Yeah, that's exactly. Exactly. They could just leave, really not it. care. They may just not give. Like yeah. they, don't, they really, they don't have. They don't. In my opinion, they don't even have to care. There, there like, are times it feels like Google doesn't care. I'm not gonna. No. Lie. Yeah. Did anyone see the conspiracy theory though today that they yeah, did this I read all that. on purpose? Like they did it on purpose, crash their own. They they made it weak on purpose so that it looked bad. Everyone to talk about how everyone's yeah. trying to order and yada. yada. There are, there are always conspiracy because we never get numbers from them either. So it's the same thing with you know Microsoft's little services. Well, was it ten or was it you know a couple thousand? Who knows? Right. That's a good point. I could actually buy into that. Oh, you're you're buying the conspiracy theory? Absolutely. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> this is the first time hearing of it. But yeah, I'd buy into yeah, it automatically. I saw it somewhere. Oh, yeah, yeah. Somebody somebody posted. Uh, well, Chris Ziegler posted something about it on Twitter, and I think I replied to him yeah. saying, "Well, it's because it's because they keep breaking on the conveyor belt, so they have to keep remaking." <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I, I, let's hope let's hope for IO this year they get it right. That's all. Oh, I mean. IO is going to be another disaster. I I can just you're already right feeling that. I can I can call it right now. <laughs> well, I, I hope you're wrong because yeah. All right, let's get out of Nexus Four sales stuff. The last thing about Nexus Four I want to talk about then is the LTE chip that was found over the well. Okay, not found. We knew it had an LTE chip ra radio, I believe, inside. There's something missing anyway. But there was LTE in the damn thing, and over the weekend. Everyone in Canada got the Nexus 4, and they were like, hey, let's tweak some things and see what we get. And sure enough, Band 4 works and is live in the thing. Um, and in the U.S., that means nothing, because T-Mobile apparently is going to be the only one with Band 4, and they don't even, I don't even think they have like half of a tower thought of being built. So it's going to be a while before we get it, but kind of cool. I mean, LTE in there. I, I can't remember what LG said. L, what did LG say? They said it just was left over from the Optimus G. Yeah. Um, no Snapdragon S4 Pro. That's yeah, fine. and then they yeah. said that nothing in the future is going to make it work everywhere or something like yeah. that. Yeah, well, they, they can't because it wasn't passed by the FCC for that chip, yeah. so it's kind of illegal to do that. Yeah, they'd have to send it through again. That's true. But it's missing, like, the resonator or something like that. I can't yeah. remember, but it, it's, something it's like not going to work. Something like the flux capacitor or something yeah. like that? I forget. I forget what it was, but it was something important. 
It was something important. Uh, but it was kind of funny. Like, over the weekend, everyone just went, oh, my God. Like, our inbox, I think it was, I think it was Friday. And just, it just got flooded. Like, we had, like, 30 or 40 emails from people just going, oh, my God, LTE. And I got excited for all of two seconds. And then I read Canada only and went, damn, I guess we're not getting it. So our, our hopes were there for a minute. Dreams are crushed. Uh, other, other news, uh, Android 4.2.1 update was released, sort of out of nowhere. Well, I guess not out of nowhere. We, we kind of knew it was coming because there was that December missing bug from the People app, and Google mentioned it and said, we're going to fix it soon. And they said before December so that no one's December birthday would be missed. Was that really like a big deal? Like that was like, how could they miss this? Oh, my God, fire your testers. I was like, whatever, dude. Like, maybe it's because I don't have a birthday in December, but uh, it didn't well, really someone, seem like a big deal to me. <laughs> yeah, someone said that to me. I called it overblown. I just thought it was every. It, it was. was. It was like a slow day, I think, and everyone was like, "Oh my god, Google well, forgot December." I likened it to the. Uh, I think it was like half a year ago where um, Apple had that bug with their alarm clocks when daylight savings yeah. time rolled around. Every alarm clock just stopped working, yeah. so. Yeah, I mean, but that's actually a big deal. That's true. <laughs> but I mean, if if we got when to Apple December, if we got to December and your phone just stopped counting the days, that would be a pretty big deal too. Yeah, yeah but the, the thing was though, like the calendar app was perfectly fine. It was just if you went into the people app, into a contact, and like tried to add their birthday, you couldn't do it. And it was like the worst thing that's ever happened in Android. <laughs> and but yeah, somebody did say to me, "Dude, your birthday's not December, so that's why you don't care." I don't know. They did fix it though, and as far as we know, the the dot one update, that's all it fixed, I think. Hey, if we're complaining about a minor bug like that is the biggest problem in 4.2, then I'm okay with it. I yeah, that's a, a, that's a win right there, then. No, I think there's a lot. There's I think there's a lot of bugs. They're just, people aren't sure if really what to think about them right now. Like, Bluetooth, I think, is pretty crappy in 4.2. Hasn't it always been crappy? Yeah, every yeah. time I hear, like, boot, Bluetooth, headset, crap... No, yeah. I think it's really bad now. The multi-user really? stuff, there's a bunch of issues there, I believe. There's just all these little bugs all over that I don't want to say Google rushed it out, but it, there's just definitely some issues. I think it's one of the more buggy we've seen in a while from them, unfortunately. Can't be as bad as Honeycomb. <laughs> Nothing is as bad as Honeycomb. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and when is the... We always do this. When's the Verizon Galaxy Nexus getting 4.2.1? It doesn't even have 4.1.2, so it's going to be like... I mean, we're like three updates behind now, aren't we? Oh, boy. Yes. Yeah, yeah. we are. We don't have dot Officially .2 three. or dot .2 or dot .2.1 now. I think this update should have been 4.2.0.1. I agree. Just because it was something so minor like that. I don't think we've ever seen them do that, though. But I agree, it should have been. I don't know. The, the Chrome build might do that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Well, those are rolling out anyway to the Nexus 4, 7, and 10, if you have those. Uh, Tim, did you get on your Nexus 7 yet? Mm, you mean my Nexus 10? Or your Nexus 7. Don't you have both? Maybe, but... Uh... <laughs> did, you, did you get it on either of them, I guess I should ask? <laughs> no, uh, I haven't even uh, looked at my Nexus 7 yet. It's probably it's right next to me. I can check. But, no, uh, you don't have to check like, right now. I was just wondering. And Eric, did you yeah. ever fix your issues? Updated Not issues? yet. I, I was busy with class today, but that's on my list of things to do. Yeah, I checked a couple of times and didn't get it, and I, I'm just too lazy to go I'm still on 4.1.1 because it just I not. have every single problem possible trying to update my Nexus 7. That sucks. I mean, I try to help you, but I guess we, we need to jump well, in and hang out one day. And all no, I mean, I know how to do it. I just wanted to try out a root toolkit instead of you know, actually flashing the factory images myself and oh, yeah. something got hung up somewhere and now it's boot looped, so I have to go in and do it myself. Those so, damn root tool kits. I mean, we were just talking about it last week, so I thought it was pretty funny when I ran into those problems. Yep, that is good. All right, let's talk about the Galaxy Note 2 because guess what? It's finally launching on Verizon tomorrow. Not a big surprise, right? It's had a ship date of November 27th for like a month or something like that, I believe. But it's finally hitting Verizon tomorrow. It's the last one of the five major carriers, I think, to get it. And, uh, yeah, we put, threw up a post about it today just saying that it's finally official. And there's a lot of people excited about this thing. Like, a lot. Everyone says, oh, my God, greatest phone ever. Actually, a lot of people got this. All, they got theirs already because they pre-ordered. And the pre-orders show up, like, a day early. 
Uh, pro tip, by the way, if you want a device and you know you're going to get it, pre-order the thing. You almost always get it a day early. Sometimes two. I think some people even got it yesterday, which is just crazy. So note two, um, we reviewed it. Tim has it now. We're, we're still pretty mixed on it. We think it's too damn big. Um, yeah, just as a quick little thing, uh, the 4.2.1 update is a total of 1.1 megabytes big. That's ridiculous. I'm, <laughs> I I got the update, and I am installing it right now. Yeah, but, it's uh, thing. Yeah. So, yeah, but back to the Note 2, I'm starting to love that thing. Are like, you really? <laughs> it's, really? Like the, it's the phone I carry around my house now. Like, I don't get out much. It's but, your house uh, phone. <laughs> It's, it's sitting my, next to your house. It's next to yeah. your house shoes, yeah. Yeah, because if I'm at home, like it's, I think it might be just the perfect size. Because you know, you just, yeah, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, but, but if you take it out in public, will you answer a call on it? Will you be man enough to answer a call on it? Well, now I have to take the Spectrum Two out whenever I go outside, which is unfortunate. <laughs> but uh, I've been using the Razer HD as my outdoors phone because I can actually, you know, rely on it. Yeah. And. Uh, Verizon Sport GLTE. I mean, I think you just invented an entire category of phone. The house the phone. The house phone. And not like the <laughs> house phone that you plug into a wall. Like, this is new. The house smartphone. I kind of like that. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm with you, though. That was when, when I had the thing. That's when I was using it. I was like, this is kind of cool to have at home on my coffee table. Other than that, yeah. Couldn't take it out. Too big. Yep. Any any parting thoughts from the Note 2 from anyone now that it, I think we don't really, not that I don't want to talk about it, but we don't have to talk about it. when's it coming out anymore. Ron, I know you really love the Note 2 if you want to do, do. Any, do final, any final words for the Note 2. Uh, well, if you're going to do it, at least replace that home button. Yeah, can you scratch the Verizon logo off that bad boy? I don't have one yet. I thought I was supposed to get one soon, but huh. I, don't, I don't have it yet. I, I, I want to know. Actually, I was... Like two weeks ago, I was on Amazon looking up stickers to cover that thing to see if they. Yeah, like would there. that actually stop someone from buying the device? For me, yes, I would not. <laughs> it just looks so bad. Yeah, I would never sport that. No, thank you, guys. The Verizon logo is beautiful. <laughs> if it was only the check mark, I could yeah. think about it. But with Maybe. Verizon too, what the fuck? What <laughs> happens when you're looking at your phone? You're like, which carrier do I have again? Yeah, yeah, that's well, right. Then I can just it. turn it around on the back, and then it's like huge right there. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, think, think about the hassle though to turn around the whole device that big when you've got it on the front like that. That's great. Yeah, that's you're true. gonna be that's you're gonna true. have some wind resistance. Yeah, to turn it around. yeah, they're they're looking out for you. They, <laughs> Verizon yeah. cares about you deeply, deeply, wow, and, and physically. What what did somebody say today? They said Verizon. The pull down notification that says Verizon, the lock screen that says Verizon, the back logo that says Verizon wasn't enough. You had to put it on the damn home button. Well, they're like, it's so big, we can fit another logo somewhere on here. And they're the Where only one. They're the only one that did it. Right on the button. It's just amazing. Yep. I mean, I don't know that it would deter me from buying it if I really liked a Note 2, just because Verizon's network's so good, but what a weird decision. What a weird, weird decision. What a weird company. Let's just... Let's when, just we're CES, when we're at CES, when we're at CES, me and... Kellen are gonna hunt down the person responsible for putting that logo on that on that button. Yeah, when we go to the uh, Verizon off the record party, we're gonna ask every marketing C exec in there what the hell they were thinking. Yeah, oh, if we get invited, yeah. All right. What yeah. if on the next iPhone <laughs> they just put a little check in the button instead of a instead oh, of? Oh God, that would be sweet. <laughs> or like a big 4G LTE logo on the back while you're at it. Oh yeah, dude. Like, come on. Why are we getting screwed? Apple would be so down for that. Yeah, I doubt it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. The Note 2. Let's let's move on from that. Let's talk about the Droid DNA for a second. I have one now. Look at that. Oh, fingerprinted back. Can you guys see that? Yeah, that I'm jealous. sexy. I'm jealous. It, it is really it is really a sexy phone. Except that, like I said, there's like fingerprint. You can't and you can't wipe them off. Tim, it's kind of like the Nexus 10 back where like a fingerprint's on there, it's permanently on there. Let you take like a white, a wet rag to it or something. That's just another way you can like personally customize and <laughs> identify your phone. Like, hey, is that my phone? Yep, that's my fingerprint. I mean, you probably could like write your name, and actually, it's not that bad. <laughs> so, just my my initial thoughts. So, Dave already reviewed this thing, did a great job with it. Um, I just wanted to get a hold of it because I was jealous. But um, it, this phone is pretty crazy. Like, when you pick it up, so I handed it to my wife earlier, and she was like, whoa, this is light. Like, I don't think she thought there was even a battery in there. So, like, um, it's crazy thin, which you guys know. The screen is 
it's one of those things you have to see to believe. Like we were talking earlier, um, I pulled up just like a, a folder that had all my favorite apps in it, and the icons look better than any icon you've ever seen in your life. Like they look, I don't want to say they look HD because it's obviously an HD display, but they look crazy crisp, the colors, everything. Um, the phone's pretty fast. It does have HTC Sense on there, which is driving me nuts already. Like I, I'm, I'm trying to give it a chance because it's 4 Plus. You know, it's a new version. I haven't really used it yet. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's crappy. It just looks ugly and it's slow. Uh, but otherwise, the camera seems to be okay, even though Dave hated it. I'll have to take more photos and see how they look. The power button's on the top. That sucks. Um, it's impossible oh, to reach. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, on a phone this big, there's no... Yeah, that's going to no suck. Use. Yeah, I mean, you have to you have to hold it in this hand and then, like, reach up and touch <laughs> it with the other. Like, that's a, I know that's not that big of a deal, but it is kind of. Um, what it's else? a huge deal. It's a huge deal. That's going to be, like, one of my main points yeah. in Spectrum 2. Like, that's crap. Yeah, I mean, I do sort of agree. Like, when you pick up a phone, you should feel the click right there. It should, you know, like, even with a big phone, they should try and make it so people only have to use one hand to operate it. And putting it on the top just I hated that. the power button on the top of the Droid 3. Uh, that drove me nuts. Mm-hmm. This is going to be impossible to use. It's pretty tough. It is <sighs> pretty tough. Yeah. Um, other than that, it has wireless charging, which you already used, which is cool. So right now, I don't know where I was just talking about how I love wireless charging the other day. And now I have a Nexus 4 that has it here. I have this HTC 8X and then this thing, the DNA. They all have wireless charging. It's like the greatest day ever. And Tim, you have a wireless charging phone now, isn't it? Oh, great? yeah. Oh, yeah, Spectrum 2 on the wireless charger. <laughs> just keep bringing it up. Just keep using it. Yeah, the wireless charging is pretty sweet. Um, I've never used it before, so I'm really getting into it. I wish more of my phones used, you know, could do it. It's nice to just be able to, like, set your phone up. But anyway, uh, yeah. final thoughts on DNA, just for me. I guess these are just sort of first impressions. Battery life, I've uh, been hammering on it because I set it up with all my apps, yada, yada. Played some games. It's on LT only, and I think after, like, four and a half hours, I've still got, like, 61% left, which isn't bad for a first charge. So I'll take it. Um... On that, on that tiny little battery, too. Good job. Yeah, that tiny little battery. So, <laughs> and, and speaking of DNA battery, we Tim asked everyone the other day, I think it was yesterday, actually, how battery life has been. And I would Monday. say like 75%, oh, yeah, Monday. 75% of the people maybe said it's awesome. Most people said it's crazy good. I can't believe how good it is. I had a couple of people say that it was awful, and but they really do seem to be in the minority. So, so far, the uh, hmm. verdict on this thing is pretty good. Yeah, Droid DNA. I don't know. I don't know if I want to buy one or not yet, though. Eric, are you considering it strongly? Um, yeah. I'm, if something else doesn't come out, you know, within the next four or five months, because I think that's when our upgrade is that isn't going to be used, um, I think that'll probably be my next phone. Yeah, it's pretty good. And like, I, like Tim, I think Dave's sending you that one, isn't he? And if he does, I think you're going to like it. I really think you're going to compare it to the 1X and go, wow. Yeah, um, I should be getting it by uh, you know sometime early next week. So I'm excited. Uh, yeah, if it's anything like the One X in terms of the way it feels, you know, on the back, because that's my favorite part of the One X. It's just stroking the back, and uh, yeah, then I'll be happy. I mean, the hand motion on that is what made it this right. Oh yeah, Ron's stroking his right now. So the I'm so backup. jealous. Everybody has a One X except me. I'm so jealous. Yeah, that's just a review. You're not on it. Yeah, still. The, uh, so but this I can one, stroke it. Yeah, you can't stroke it. So this one's softer even. <laughs> Is that the One really. One X or One X Plus? One X. You're reviewing the One X? I'm not reviewing. I just want to review it. It's like I didn't use the Oh, thing. I got yeah. you. I thought you were reviewing it. I was like, how long has that phone been out? <laughs> You're in a review right now. No, no, no. Yeah. yeah. The most recent phone I had like at my house was the, the original Incredible, which is not very recent. So. Oh, I got you. Yeah. And he hears you brag about the damn thing every week, Tim, so he wanted to get a hold of one. Yeah. yeah. So, sorry, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> so the back's not quite as... It's softer, I think. It's like a softer touch than the one X. I'm still stroking this thing. A softer okay. touch? What kind of material home? would you... Yeah, like... It feels almost like a matte finish, but it's like... I don't want to call it fuzzy, but it's... It, I don't know. It's really soft. Because, like, the one X almost has that ceramic kind of feel, doesn't That's it? What it feel, yeah, it feels like a ceramic, yeah. Yeah, so this is different than that. It's not like it's a texture, but it's... It's really hard to explain. It's soft. I don't know. Everyone needs to get a hold of this thing at some point because it's definitely different than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be too big. It doesn't feel too big. Like the Note 2 mm-hmm. feels too big. This doesn't really. It feels about like a slightly bigger Galaxy S3 maybe. I don't know. Pretty cool. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. All right, let's talk Spectrum 2, Tim. Let's just, just run through, like, immediately what comes to your mind with the Spectrum 2. Well, first word. Uh, I, you know, I, I want to say, like, a bad word, like, crap. But, <laughs> but like, I want to give... I mean, you got to give props where props are due. You know, I've been using it for the day or so, and uh, the battery life is really great. Nice. Um, I forget specifics on what size battery it is. Like, that even matters these days. Um, it's good. Uh, besides that, uh, well, I have a funny story to tell first. All right, so last night I was hanging out with a friend of mine who works at Apple, and I showed him the Spectrum 2, and I was like, hey, man, this is like the new top-of-the-line phone. This has like some super retina display in it. In fact, it does not. It's 720p display. It's not very powerful at all. He's like, wow, look at that display. It's so awesome. And uh, I, t I totally pulled a Jimmy Kimmel on it, and... Uh, it was hysterical. He thought it was the greatest thing ever. And then I told him, I was like, this is a crap. And uh, <laughs> Well, it can't yeah. be that bad. It's got to be close to what's in the Optimus G or something, right? It's not that old. It's just, it's IPS. It's nothing, it's not supposed to be fancy or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a mid-range device. I, so. Well, yeah, the price might be, but I think the display is actually supposed to be pretty good. Uh, it's, Obviously, it's the not Apple bad. guy was like, oh, my God. Well, you know, because it's just like in his mind, he's like, this is amazing. <laughs> Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, that Jimmy Kimmel skit. If people haven't seen that, hysterical. it's amazing. It's great. Yeah, hysterical. It is so, one of the funnier yeah. things Jimmy Kimmel's done in a long yeah, he, time. Yeah, I know. I don't like Jimmy Kimmel. I'm more of a Jimmy yeah. Fallon guy, but yeah. that skit was good. It was. Yeah. So yeah, other than that, come on, I'm, to, I'm talking. He's upset about the Spectrum too. <laughs> so yeah, yeah he Spectrum, really likes it. <laughs> it's really, it's you know, it's really beefy. I just, oh. and it, it's really tall. And again, power button on the top, which yeah. I do, I can't get down on. So there's nothing on the right side. So when you're holding it in your hand, there's nothing for your thumb to do. And so where the, the power button the should be. the volume rocker on the left side? On the left side. That's weird. Yeah. It is weird. Man. Well, it's weird to have well, that. That's, that's, that's where it is on the uh, GS3. And the Galaxy no, no. Nexus. No, the yeah. volume rocker being it's there is fine. Cool. I'm talking about the power button, though. Yeah, the like, power button yeah. there is ridiculous. That's, yeah, I don't mind where the volume rocker is. Yeah. That's fine. Actually, but, yeah, it's better on the left side because on the DNA, it's on the right side, so you have to like use your thumb, and that sucks. Yeah, yeah exactly. and I keep I keep on the one X. I keep uh, accidentally hitting it while I'm holding the phone because mm -hmm. it's like it's like in a weird spot. It is. Yeah, I guess it should be on the left. Anyway, keep going. What what are the specs on that thing? I forgot. Uh, it's it's like Qualcomm dual Snapdragon S4 dual core, one gigabytes of RAM. Uh, really? No, oh, man. And like the. the <laughs> Every time I look at it, I'm just like, Ugh. just disappointed <laughs> yeah. every time. Because like, oh. then the buttons down here, who are like the neon blue, and just having the settings key. I know that having a settings key isn't a bad idea, but so when they took the other ones, they cramped them on the left side and give this one all the room in the world. Like, what do you need all that space for for the settings key? <laughs> I don't know. I've been complaining about it to pretty much everyone who will talk to me about it all day long. So. <laughs> Well, and how do they go from, because on the Optimus G, they had, like, home, back, and menu, and the menu was, like, it had, like, the three lines or whatever. The three lines, yeah, but for some reason, they just, <laughs> what I don't they, know. And they took the, That's like, bad. three dots. They were like, well, the Android design guidelines like this three dotted thing and it's, that's for that apps. Might, that's that LG, might be what they that's for apps. That's not for hardware. That I just can't believe so they put it. Yeah, crazy. So yeah. It's so yeah, my um, my full review will be up next week, and yes, and we will have some fun. Yeah, poor Spectrum too. It's it's unfortunate because uh, actually I don't know why it's unfortunate. It's just weird. It's not. Because, <laughs> yeah. Well, so when it first was announced, it was the Optimus LTE two, and I remember I think it was the I think the Euro version might have two gig of RAM, and it was supposed to be awesome. And then LG like two weeks later goes. No, wait, we have this phone called Optimus G. Just forget about the LG Optimus LTE2 or whatever they were calling it. And then Verizon's like, well, we'll take it <laughs> for whatever reason. <laughs> what a weird phone. I mean, and they, like, announced it, and I don't even know where you can buy it, like at Best Buy only. It's just sort of – or online only. It's, it's a weird phone. Sometimes I don't know what Verizon's doing. God, it's weird. <laughs> it's awful. For being the biggest carrier in the United States by, you know, at least in the LTE race – you think they could demand everybody's top dollar phone? You know, it seems like AT and T gets 
gets special treatment on some phones, you know, for some reason. I, you know, that's a good point. But then again, that was that hasn't always been the case. Um, say just like a year or two ago, AT and T had crap for Android phones. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. they weren't getting anything. But now, yeah, this goes into another conspiracy theory of mine <laughs> with with Apple and AT and T being in bed together. But um, yeah, no, it's it's true. I mean, you look at their ad, and I think I think for Verizon, it has to do with what they think they can sell and what they want to push marketing dollars behind. Uh, right. So. Oh, yeah, here's a conspiracy. Yeah. Here's a conspiracy. They're getting all the crap phones that aren't the Droid brand, so they just funnel you straight into the Droid brand and just mm. keep you there because everything else is bad. That's yeah. a conspiracy for you right there. <laughs> we could go on all day about crappy Verizon lineup. Yeah. Though. Actually, AT&T has a really good lineup now. They do. It's stuff. impressive. I mean, yeah, I mean, the One X and the One X Plus... Well, well they, they have, have you know, all the media. all the top Samsung phones, top HTC phones. Yeah. Well, they've got I a mean, huge. Really, Go ahead. And then Motorola is just sticking with Verizon, I think, you know, yeah. but because uh, they really don't, I don't think they need to go over to AT and T. But and yeah, and yeah, they have the top Windows phones now. They've had the iPhone forever, so really, they don't even need another phone <laughs> on their lineup. All they need is the iPhone, and they'll keep them in business. But yeah. Yeah, well, they've got they've got a huge advantage over Verizon though because they're GSM, so it's of not course. difficult to throw those phones over there. Well, yeah. So like when, um, for example, like my brother was getting a new phone and he's on Sprint currently, but he wants to switch to a new carrier. And I was like, well, you know, Verizon, they've got their coverage and stuff. He's like, well, you know, I do a lot of traveling for work and overseas to Africa, and he's like, I'm gonna have to go on GSM. And I was like, well, then there you go, AT and T. It is basically. I mean, that's just that's just the way the world works right now. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if wonder if manufacturers hate Verizon CDMA network because yeah, they can make a phone in and you know announce it for Europe and then like a month later they just throw it on AT and T. It's like mm -hmm. no big deal, and they can't do that on Verizon. Like they have to build special. CDMA well, yeah. Network. Well, we know Google hates it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but that's but that might change with LTE, and we'll have to kind of see how those standards, you know, over in over in Europe, how that ends up. So it's a bummer the FCC didn't uh, push that down and make one standard in America, but. Because I don't think, like in England, I don't think they even have a. They're still giving out Spectrum, aren't they? Yeah, I think so. It might be. Uh, yeah. So I mean, there's. I mean, a lot of that stuff is still up in the air. I mean, I think some other countries have divvied up Spectrum and that kind of thing. But that's. I mean, that's gonna, when we drop out of 3G eventually. You know, over the next 10 years, that's. I mean, it's gonna. It's gonna change things when we get voice over LTE and all that kind of stuff. 10 years if you're on T-Mobile, maybe. I don't know about you, but uh, Verizon, well, just, I mean, Verizon gonna have 4G is going to be good to go by the middle of next year. So Yeah, yes. but I mean, I know, that, I know. Yeah. I'm just, just playing. The big thing is is obviously VOLTE, because then you should technically be able to have just an unlocked LTE phone. That's, that's LTE it. That's only yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's, that's going to be the interesting thing. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can't wait. And we're going to have unlocked bootloaders when we get to that point, too. Oh, no. So good. <laughs> no. They'll be locked even tighter. Yeah. Thankfully, I don't think Verizon can, they can't block unlocked, not bootloaders, but like SIM unlocked phones. It's just, you, there's none that work for them yet. But I think part of the C block, all that stuff said like they have to allow unlocked phones, which I yeah. think means once we get VOLTE, we should be able to just buy whatever the hell damn VOLTE phone we want, put on Verizon. Hopefully. Yeah. And, so, and some of them, like, like we mentioned before, the iPhone is unlocked, the, this, the DNA was for a little bit. Um, so, but that's, mistake. Yeah, <laughs> but that's. I mean, that's. I mean, that's going to be because that's the thing that you know, for somebody that doesn't want to be on a contract, wants to pay full price for a device, you can't do that on a CDMA carrier, basically. You know, or try. You know, and try and compete strictly on on price and just buy your device and move it around like you can over in Europe. And that's. I don't. I mean, maybe, maybe if the radio, if we start getting radios that work on all the, you know, across different uh, carriers in the U.S. as well. I mean, I guess that's a possibility, but. Um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. So, I think one of the main issues is that these phones are so darn expensive when they aren't subsidized. I mean, like here's yeah. Google putting out a Nexus Four, top of the line specs, that's great, and it's going for a price that's completely reasonable. And I think people are like swarming to it. If it was more like, you know, if you could get say the Galaxy Note Two or anything like that for you know five hundred tops instead of seven fifty or whatever, then you know people might be more inclined to the idea of getting unlocked phones like that. Yeah, well, Chris Ziegler was talking about that. How he thinks that he's going to—that's going to change in the next few years. Oh, re like retail pricing for. Yeah, and that ev that eventually he thinks, you know, people getting accustomed to the idea of you know oh. instead of getting a phone every two years, maybe you get it for three to four. Right. And so you're not worried about getting locked into a contract. You don't want to do that because you can have it for longer. So you don't care if you're in a contract or not. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I well, and then, but then you have to think about uh, profit markup, market, mm -hmm. you know, markup from the OEM standpoint. Like they want to be making money at the same point too. And Google doesn't mind taking a loss on it because they're making up for it in Google Play services or whatever. I, there's has. You know, over the next few years, I'm sure there's going to be some type of middle ground where everyone's going to have to meet, and maybe it'll go the nexus route where someone's taking a loss on it. I don't care who it is. They need to figure it out. They don't care, <laughs> but we won't. <laughs> exactly, because we're the consumers, and we shouldn't have to care. We should just be getting a good phone for a good price. Yeah. Yep. Well, Verizon could be preparing for all of that to happen anyway with the LTE and open data and all that because they're trying to charge people just for data now. So they might be already prepared. Like once we get the LTE, they're just gonna, they already have plans ready to, you know, take advantage of that. But yeah, it, it's, it's interesting. I, I hope it sort of changes, but at the same time, I just feel like the carriers in the U.S. have so much damn power and they make so much money right now to change something off of, you know, subsidies and contracts would be a huge change. I don't I, I they're going to try to fight that any damn way they can, I bet. I don't know. Yeah. All right, let's, uh, let's talk about some apps. So just sort of favorite apps we've been using over the last week or so. And uh, Tim, why don't you just kick it off? Uh, well, I don't know if anyone's a hockey fan. Well, it's hard to be an NHL fan right now. But uh, if you're into the WHL, the Western Hockey League, uh, we have the Portland Winter Hawks up here, which I've been following, and they're kicking butt this season. But, uh, like, the official WHL Android app got updated, so it uh, pushes uh, scores and all that stuff. It was a really crappy app before. Now it's, like, a semi-decent Android application. There's a WHL app? Show me this thing. I want to see this. show it to you. It's, it's just, you know, it exists. Like, on your phone. Don't <laughs> it's you a have thing. It? Oh, gotcha. Okay. I was like, what? Uh, open. Winter Hawks. Are they actually good? They've been good for the last few years. I've They're been. doing really well. Number two in the league. <laughs> the Only down now. by like two, though. Well, because NHL is well. completely just not happening. So. Right. What, do they cancel through All-Star break now or something like that? Yeah. yeah. Yikes. NHL. I follow someone on Twitter who's a huge NHL fan, and all he does all day long is just bitch about the NHL. Like, whatever, dude. Uh, well, there's the app right there. But you just got your scores. And, uh, you know, it's semi-decent looking. That doesn't look bad at all. Yeah. No, and then down there on the bottom, you got your news, and you got your standings. It's actually a really nice standings look. I don't know. I'm just I like surprised that... I like the colors. It's just good at... I'm just surprised that, uh, you know, a small league like that has such a... It actually has an Android app for one. Small league? Oh, oh, come on, it's the WHL. <laughs> yeah. I bet the NHL oh, yeah. app's not even I didn't good. even know it existed until you told me about it, and even then, I'm... <laughs> I well, where do you people... think all the NHL players come from? You think they just, like, sprout and just kind of, here I am, NHL. Yeah, like, they, gotta, they gotta come from somewhere. And, yeah. no, not Canada. Like, <laughs> <laughs> lots of them do come from Canada, but, you know, that's their point of origin. That's not the point. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I didn't know NHL existed, or uh, WHL existed, until I moved to Portland and I met some hockey fans. And I was like, hockey is boring. And then I went to a game and I was like, holy shit. Hockey's games, awesome. Yeah, the games are fun live. I just yeah. Yeah. So WHL, that's all. Nice. All right. Um, I'm using this app. It's not new. It's just called PickFrame, and because I'm sort of an Instagram tool, I use this Addict. app called PickFrame. Yeah, Addict. Uh, it it's just one of those apps that allows you to like separate and post like three pictures in one and do all fancy. And there's other apps out there like I think Photo Grid's one of the big ones on Android, which is free. And PickFrame actually costs a buck, but Photo of Grid was just so ugly that I forked out the dollar and PickFrame's awesome. It's really minimal. If you're an Instagram junkie, grab PickFrame. So anyway, Ron, what do you got? Uh, I've got an app called uh, Eye in the Sky, um, and uh, it's a weather app. Um, and I don't know if we'll be able to do this, but this is uh, what it looks like. So you can kind of see the look of it. But it's, uh, it's holo-themed, and so right now it's showing where I'm at, and so it's got it's got different icons, so you can change the icon set for that. So if you want it to look uh, kind of like a metro look, so it's nice and clean, or you can do different different ones. You can pick different cities, but it's holo themed, so you can swipe through, and you can see the um, this is the uh, for the week, and then this is just what's going on in the next couple days at the bottom, and all that. Um, and it's also got the notification on the top, so it shows you the weather right in there, uh, just sitting there. So it's a nice little app, it's well designed. It's I think it's like a buck. 91 to unlock it with no ads, but if you don't mind having ads, then 
it just does it. You can add as many cities as you want and swap between them, and so it's a nice little weather app. Yeah, it looks nice. I'm mm -hmm. always down for a new weather app. Sweet. Eric, what do you got? I have been using the Tumblr application for uh, my phone nonstop recently. Um, it used to suck. I know you and I talked about it back in the day, Kellen, and it used to be horrible. Mm -hmm. But the recent updates that they've uh, put out for it have just made it awesome. And I'll just sit there and scroll through Tumblr when I, you know, when I'm waiting around for stuff and don't have my computer out. And it makes it really easy to reblog. It loads really fast. It's it's really awesome. The only thing I don't like is that it won't uh, install on the Nexus 7. Um, I don't think anybody told them that it's basically a phone layout anyway and it just needs to scale up. But um, that's that's my only gripe. I wish that I could do that. So does that mean like it won't, you can't install on a Zoom or something yeah. like that either? No tablets? Uh, no, no tablets whatsoever. Well, that's weird. Yeah. I mean, they're a pretty big service to not have a tablet. Fail. You, know, you know what? They don't have it on uh, iPad either. Oh, yeah. really? Huh. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why, but they, yeah, so. And you'd think, because they're all about their big pictures and the big scroll and all that kind of stuff, you'd think that they would be yeah. all about that. Yeah, I don't know if they're expecting people to just use the web or what. It's a, yeah. it's a weird omission. Fail. <laughs> <laughs> I love Tumblr. I tried to get into it for a while, like personally, just create my own Tumblr and had a lot of fun. But it's more fun just to look at everybody else's stuff. Yeah, I, I love your Tumblr. Kellen's Tumblr is the classiest Tumblr I've ever seen. I haven't used it in like probably eight months. Though. Probably about eight I months. Get back into that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, I like doing it. It's fun. Have well, because I think uh... Instagram kind of just took over. It's kind of like yeah. Tumblr, except right there on your phone, and it totally works. Yeah, pretty much. Have you played with the uh, gestures on it at all, Eric? On Tumblr? Yeah. Um, the only one I do is just that what I really like is um, instead of hitting the reblog button and then you go into another screen and then you hit reblog again, you can just hold down on the reblog thing oh, yeah. and a little window comes up and it's yeah. a little progress bar and then it just reblogs it and you can keep going. That's really the only one I use. The other uh, thing you can do, I don't know if we'll be able to see this or not. No, probably not. But if you hold, uh, hold on the, the right button or whatever, you can yeah. slide over and go straight to picture, or slide over and go straight to text. Oh. So if you're not gonna do like a full post, you want to take a picture. Oh real quick. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's and that's pretty sweet. I like that a lot. Yes. Yeah. Like I said, it's an awesome app. Oh, sounds like I need to get back into Tumblr just to play for damn. App. Yeah, having it on my phone makes me update it infinitely more. Uh, another thing to update. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's talk about some games. Um, Eric, let's just start with you. You're playing Ingress more. You're yeah. Loving. Okay, so I installed it, or I requested my invite, and uh, I didn't get one. In, well, I got one when I was back in Indy, and I kind of walked around. There weren't that many places. I went downtown, but um, I wasn't in a very, you know, lively part of downtown. There wasn't a lot of portals, which is what the game's all about. And I came back to my college town and fired it up, and I found that there was some guy who had just been doing work while all the college kids were away. And most of the places, most of the portals that you have to um, attack are on my way to classes, and I've just been playing it like crazy. There, It just gets so fun once you start attacking portals and taking them down and trying to link them and make your own little, you know, network of things around your city, it gets really addictive. Yeah, I haven't played it at all. Tim, you messed around with it for a minute, didn't you? Have you used it anymore? <laughs> yeah, literally about one minute, Kellen. Um, <laughs> I opened it up, and uh, there's there's one portal by me, but it's like, it's so cold outside, I really yeah. don't want to go walking anywhere right now. And yeah. so, and there's no portals in my house, trust me. And that's so, the only uh, downside. If if you live if you live in a pretty like rural area or yeah. you're not walking places, exactly. it's not really for you. But like for me, I'm walking to class every day. I'm walking at least three quarters of a mile all over campus every day. Yeah. And you know, between classes if I have time, I just stop next to them, play a couple, you know, hack the portal, get some stuff, try and it's really fun. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, Tim and I are like the ultimate hermits. Like, we do this all day, and so we never get out. And then we have pets, so we just like hang out with our pets. And neither of us live downtown Portland anymore, so we're like, 
Yeah, that game looks really fun. I prefer, like, cave troll is the proper term I like to use for myself. <laughs> I lay boys. dormant, especially in, like, when it's sunny out. <laughs> well, yeah, the you know, weather definitely does not help our situation, does it? No, it does not. <laughs> what, the that? other thing I found interesting, um, they have a little web app where they just overlay the Ingress map with all the portals on top of Google Maps. And you can kind of go through and see where everything's connected. And you can, because this is worldwide, so you can type in New York and see how much everybody's doing there. You could type in Tokyo. I did that the other day just because I was curious. And I mean, clearly, it's probably, it's an app that someone put so much time and energy into, and it shows. Like, just from yeah. open, like opening it for a few minutes, I could tell that if I got out, I would totally get into this game. Yeah. So it looks awesome. I love all the colors they use. Just it, it looks. It's great. still it's still in beta too. So I mean, right. There was well, a couple. Of, change. Yeah, a couple people are you know saying that it's buggy, and I've found a couple bugs too. It's kind like of. Like what? Um, just it acts kind of weird sometimes. Location is sometimes hard to find. Um, and once you do, if you have your GPS running and you're walking around with it, it destroys your battery. Because oh, yeah. it's updating GPS, Wi-Fi, and running your screen all in real time, and it'll do, you can literally almost watch your battery go down. So if you're uh, a Thunderbolt owner, don't um, use don't it. do it <laughs> unless you're unless you have a generator with you. Don't do it. <laughs> generator for the Thunderbolt. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, Are there a yeah. lot of people using it? Like, can you and tell? Like, that's the other board? thing. Um, in the bottom of the app, you you know, you kind of think that it's just you, but in the bottom of the app, there's a little communications thing tab that you can pull up, and um, you can send out little, you know, communications. You can send it via like an unsecure wire, or you can swipe over to your factions. Uh, secure communications and talk to the people on your team and plot against the other people. It's actually pretty interesting. So I didn't think there was going to be anybody around me playing it, and I sent out a message, and I got like four responses uh, wow. within the day. So if You're like making new friends. That's I know, awesome. right? That's great. Yeah, we're all little secret agents. This may be a good way for me to get out of the house once in a while. I can meet new people. Yeah, there, there's like groups spawning up on uh, Google+. Plus. So they're like Cincinnati enlightened, and they're oh, like, "Hey, boy. I'm going, I'm going downtown at five o'clock. Who wants to come to the portals with me?" And that kind of stuff. So, I'll post something on Craigslist misconnections. Hey, I was closing this portal. Where do you yeah, have to? You were next to me. I was closing this portal. I'm looking on Google Play right now, and it has between 100 and 500 thousand downloads already. I mean, I don't know if, if they've sent that many invites out, but that's quite Apparently, a few. Apparently, a lot of people have gotten their uh, invites today. I think they sent out another big wave today. Wave. But, um, yeah, it's pretty fun. The only problem is it's kind of hard to level up, and I think that's something they're going to have to, to balance out, which is, I mean, that's in beta. But you get um, experience points for doing stuff, but... You only get experience points for doing the big stuff. So once you start off and you don't really have a lot of items, it's kind of hard to go up to these established portals where people are like level three and level four and to try and do anything. Mm -hmm. But that's just a balance thing. They can easily fix that. So I'm I'm actually pretty curious to see where this is going to go. Nice. Yeah, keep us updated on it. Uh, Tim, any games for us this week? Yeah, my game is sort of old. Um, it's from the same people who make the uh, Jetpack Runway. Jetpack, Jetpack Joyride. Jetpack Joyride. Thank you, Ron. Red and uh, I love, I love that game. But um, the game that came up before that that got me into that studio was uh, Age of Zombies. And basically, you just kind of like roam around a little map, killing like a ton of zombies. And uh, like every you know couple of months or so, I'll go back and just kind of beat the game again because it's that much fun. Because you get a bunch of different guns, you gotta kill the boss characters, and all that fun stuff. So, I've been playing Age of Zombies. It can be found on Google Play, I think, for a dollar, or maybe two dollars. But I got it back when Amazon had it for the free app of the day. So, I've had it for a while. But, uh, if you haven't tried it yet, I highly suggest you do so. Nice. Yeah. Huh. It's not as cool as Ingress, and it won't get you out of the house, but <laughs> it's cool. Well, there's that one certain game that got like nine new levels the other day. I've been playing that a little bit. Yeah, that one tiny little game. What game is that? 
<laughs> and I think you can toggle it to hard and beginner now. Everyone already called it out in the chat. They were like, oh, Granny Smith. Anyway. Yeah, you're, you're Papa Smith. Or Grandpa Smith. Or <laughs> oh, <whatever>. dear. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, Papa Smith. Yeah, weird. All right, that's enough for the games. Rob, <laughs> Rob, Rob, do you have anything to rant about this week? Anything you want to go off on? Uh, no, not really. So the only thing I, I thought we could talk a little bit about my post that I threw up yesterday. About social networks. You want to go all social? Yeah. Now, I yeah. want to just ask one question before you start. Um, okay. the, picture, the top picture that you used, was that yours? Did you make that? Yeah, I made it. God, it's awesome. I that's love that good. picture. That was that's a really good. good picture. So that's cool. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, I, uh, it's something that I've been thinking about for a while. Um, but just like the way that I, I use Twitter constantly. That's my main social network. I tried to get into Tumblr. I actually tried doing it over holiday break. Actually, that's why I was messing around with that app a little bit. Um, so, but I mean, I, you know, I do stuff, you know, I, obviously blogging and stuff like that. And Facebook I have, but hate. Um, Google Plus I have, but don't use. So, I mean, there's tons of social networks, but, you know, it's, but Twitter and Instagram are probably the main ones that I use pretty consistently. Um, but, uh, you know, I've got, I've got a 16 year old sister-in-law, uh, and I, uh, used to volunteer at my church where I was hanging out with a bunch of high school students. So I was very much still connected with that kind of culture. And, you know, when I was in high school, I think MySpace like went public as like a social network in like 05, I think. Um, I, I graduated in 06 and I think I got my MySpace somewhere around there and it wasn't really like a, it wasn't designed around publishing like what's going on with your life. It was just like your own website basically. Um, and so with Facebook, I mean, they had like moods and stuff like that on, on uh, MySpace, but Facebook, you know, centered around what's your status, what are you doing right now, and updating that, especially as smartphones that are coming out shortly thereafter. Um, I remember when I first started using Twitter on SMS because I didn't have a smartphone yet. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's just, it started with this whole momentum of, you know, talking about what you're doing and then eventually, you know, taking pictures of things that you're seeing and stuff like that, which obviously, like, I remember uh, when I first started reading news stories that were based on a Twitter feed. Which was bonkers. Just the idea of like, oh, there's nobody else in the area, and you can't cover the news, but you know, here's information that we're getting from you know people that are at an event, um, which is awesome. So there's like all, all sorts of crazy advantages to this kind of stuff. But at the same time, there's like this, um, this there's, there's this economy to all social networks where you have publishing and rating content. Um, you know, so like on Tumblr, you reblog stuff. On Instagram, you double tap to like. And Facebook, you like things. Path, you smile at things, but nobody uses it. And you know, all sorts of different ways to interact with content and um, you know, one of the things from, I haven't gotten like super into, um, you know, my own thought process with this, but I've, I've kind of realized like, okay, I'm, I'm posting a lot of stuff and posting my thoughts and interacting with people like with Twitter, I'm interacting with people that I would have never ever interacted with on my own before, um, which is awesome. But at the same time, there's like this weird cost of like, you're putting up content and how often are you putting up content just so you can get likes? How often are you putting up content just so you can, you know, think, oh, people will, people will like me more, appreciate me more, stuff like that. Like, there's a subconscious shift that I think happens uh, when, we're, when we're putting up content like that. So I don't know if you guys have experienced that or seen that with your own, like, even, like, family and friends as, you know, as Instagram has become more popular and, and things like Facebook where people, like, around election time, Facebook was horrible to even look at because everybody's just blabbering whatever, you know, awesome picture they saw or whatever and, and pushing their own agenda. Um, which, you know, isn't always great. I don't always want to hear what everybody else has to say. So, um, but what do you, you know, what do you guys think about that kind of stuff? Well, you're exactly right. So people use social networks are, are this great way to like, you know, keep in contact with people, but you see it more and more now where people do stuff on them just to get noticed. And it's one of the reasons I can't stand Facebook is because people will go, they'll get on Facebook and they'll go, oh, today was so bad. And they don't say why, right? Because they want their 300 friends to go, oh my God, what's so bad? How are you? Are you okay? And then they go, oh, well this, you know, and, and that's what drives me so nuts about it. So you're right. Then that's why I avoid like that, um, that network um, for sure is because of things like that. But yeah, you see it on Twitter now. I mean, you know, that the hashtags are one of the ways that people do that. Mm -hmm. They just get crazy with hashtags. Just people, and, and like Instagram, Instagram is one of the worst. Like people post a picture and like maybe a word and then like 60 hashtags. Yep. Just because yeah. they know like they'll hit so many people to get more followers and it's all about popularity. It's crazy. And like, and I would love to just sit down with like some 16 year old kid that's like, has like 50 
50,000 followers on Instagram because it's like a big deal to teenagers, I think. Like their yeah. whole life is centered around like how many Instagram followers they have. I don't even know if like Facebook's that important to them anymore. It's like Instagram and Twitter, like if you have this many followers. Like when we all joined Instagram as Android users, all these iPhone people are like, oh, they're going to start spamming off to try to get likes to try to catch up to us all. And it's like, wow, I didn't realize it was that important. But anyway, those yeah. are just my thoughts. You're right, though. Yeah, no, and that's, and that's you know, I, I, I talked to my sister-in-law about that, and she, you know, she's got, I think somewhere in the 500s of, of, of you know, friends or followers, whatever you call wow. it, but then there are, there are other other people, you know, some of her friends have like a thousand, mm -hmm. which is bonkers, like mm -hmm. the idea that you would have that many people on on Instagram, I could maybe, maybe see that on Twitter, but even that, like, you know, these are people that you do not know, right. getting that many people to follow you, and, and, they're, and they're, it's this weird economy where, okay, I like your stuff, and you like my stuff, I follow you, you follow me. And that becomes important, and people, you know, people doing things, um, you know, on the on the social networks to get activity. And you know, if you like my picture, I'll do this. Like the Facebook has been doing that for a while. If, you know, if I get a hundred likes, or you know, then I'll tell you something or whatever. Yeah, it's a crazy thing. Eric, it is. Tam, Tim, you're a social network guy. I am a social network guy. My my self worth is directly correlates to how many likes I get, say, on Facebook <laughs> and stuff like that. So, you know, when you're talking about Facebook, you're definitely talking about, uh, God, my, I like the part where you say they push their agenda. Like, I don't know, um, I don't, you know, it's all about the way I look at it is, you know, you can follow who you want to follow. You can be friends with who you want to be friends with. I used to be where I was like, God, I got to have tons of friends, got to have all that. Now I've scaled way back and I'm like, I don't want to have anyone I don't know or even remotely, you know, to, I only the people I care about should be in my Twitter feed or something really important to me. So um, I know there's one guy in the Droid Life comments who can't stand social networks, and every time we bring up a social network, he goes out of his way to talk about how much he hates social networks. <laughs> and at the time, like, I just, I don't want to live in a world of extremes where it's either you got to have it or you can't have it at all type of thing. I just, you know, I use it in moderation. And if I want to post something, I can post something, and I can talk to my family through Facebook, who live overseas, and all that. I just I use it in the way that suits my life best. That's the best way I can explain it. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, there's plenty of tweens out there who want to get a million likes, and that's good for them. That's great. Um, let's see. What was I? Oh, okay. Talking about scaling back. Um. Every time I get on Facebook now, there's some post from some page that I went through and I liked, like uh, maybe two or three years ago, when that there was a whole craze behind making a page and getting a bunch of likes. And every time I see one of those pages, I go through and unlike it because mm -hmm. it's just, it's like, I don't know, it's it's bad for the same reasons that Tim was saying. But um, I think there's a moment. And with everybody's social networks where they become self-aware that they have people reading their stuff and they can either continue along the path that they were going and just posting things or they can turn around and start posting things trying to get responses. And I know I follow more than my fair share of people that I know personally that post things expecting responses. And I can't stand that. Yeah. I don't say anything but I just, I cannot stand expecting a response. And then people, they'll get mad when somebody like doesn't tweet back at them or retweet them. It's just, it's stupid. I used to have to, so, okay, you brought up MySpace kind of in the beginning there. And I haven't even, MySpace hasn't even been in my head for years. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so I used to be in a band and I would run our MySpace page. And basically... To be in a band on MySpace, you have to like whore yourself out, basically, or like, try and get as many people as you could. And there were these sites where you would you would put your profile link on the site, and you would say add ten people, and then those ten people would like promote you to their friends. And um, it was just this like ad whoring thing where you add me, I'll add you; you pimp me, I'll pimp you, and. Um, that made me sick of it, I think, right there, like years ago. So I got sick of it way back when. But um, You know it's making a comeback, yeah. right? Like My, MySpace. Like, like, like buy into MySpace is making a comeback. Yeah, they, they did a whole relaunch. Right. Yeah, have you seen the promo video and stuff? It actually looks kind of well, cool. It looks kind of cool. I think, you know, yeah, obviously the whole, I just love how they put my, and then there was like a space 
Yeah, that was that was the old one. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, what? The fuck? But uh, the new MySpace does look pretty nice and new and improved. Is it? Now. I mean, has it launched or is it just still uh, in that promo phase? I don't think anyone knows. <laughs> really it looks kind of cool. It's kind of like a mix of cool. like Windows 8 new tiles and like I don't know. It Maybe was, Microsoft like, will buy it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it. Looks like it's live. Yeah. Wow. I guess, Can't wait not to log. I guess that launch didn't go so well, did it? I mean, I don't know. I don't even look yeah. at MySpace. Maybe, maybe this is the old one. It's got uh, such it's got such a stigma now. They've got a, they've got more of a name to overcome than LG does. Ooh, us. that's harsh. Oh that's yeah, it true. says like rebuild, redesigned, reinvented. I'm right on the like front there. It yeah. looks weird, yeah, it though. does look pretty Doesn't... the same. I don't know. I'm not even I'm not even gonna look it up. Do I'm it. Not that interesting. Do it right now. Dude, I'm logging in. Um, you yeah, still have your account? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, I would never do that. I don't want to go back oh, to those days. This is oh. the ugliest thing I've ever seen I don't want to go can, back to those days. I can, I can, yeah, but you could go back to Tim's days, see if you can find his profile. I can, <laughs> I can screen share this. So when you log in, so right now it shows a stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's MySpace is all about music now, so let me screen right. share this. But it's still like if you log in, did you log into your page? Yeah. Or, so does it look like it used to, or does it look like some new style? No, okay. no, it looks about the same. So right there on the top, it has just like Facebook here. I'll show you. So if you see that right there on the top, it says what's happening. Uh huh. And so basically, this is like Facebook. And then on the right there, it's just all music crap. And it looks like I have one friend that looks to be still using this, and he's just loving music. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I you know I what I have the doors as a friend. Like, what was I thinking? Like, I love the doors, but why do the doors need a MySpace page? Anyways, look at that. Obviously, I have no notifications. God, I'm a loser. After all these years, nobody <laughs> wanted to say anything. All these years, I think I logged into this a couple of months ago to see what was on. But uh, I, I think I like every eight months, I'm like, hey, MySpace, and I used to do that too. I'd log in just to like look and see. Yeah, no, but I haven't done this new one yet. I'll have to do that. Well, there becomes the point where you you gain all these followers, and that can actually correlate into a monetary value. Mm -hmm. You know, how many people you're seeing, or how many people you are affecting with your tweets. Um, I don't know if any of you guys followed the Sarah Phillips scandal with ESPN and the sports writer. She, uh, this, it's a long story, but this... Oh, yeah, this she lied about everything, right? Like, yeah. her whole background, yeah. And um, she conned a few people out of their um, Twitter profiles um, because they had millions of followers or something like that, and they were making these funny sport Twitter accounts. And she said, oh, well, I'll pay you a bunch of money for those because that's a lot of people to be reaching with your Twitter account. And, uh, you know, she ended up not paying them. It was a whole big deal. But I think down the road you're going to be seeing – it's going to be commonplace for people to take, you know, hundreds or maybe even thousands of dollars for a Twitter account. Yeah, probably. Although I think Twitter tries to not let that happen. I don't know if right, but you can yeah. still do it with a uh, World of Warcraft accounts, though. Build yeah. a pretty sweet account. So that remember, <laughs> remember when Netflix tried to make that second service? Uh, what was it called? Flickster. Quickster. 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 Did you guys hear the scandal around that? No. Some guy had the at Quickster account, and it was the biggest pothead in the world. Oh, yeah, he yeah, just yeah. post the stupidest stuff. <laughs> and apparently Netflix offered him, like, a lot of money for it, and he just started posting about how he wasn't going to take the money and all this kind of stuff. I, I bet you he took a, the money. <laughs> turned into a huge... No, he never did. What? Uh, Quickster never launched. They didn't they yeah. Yeah. draft it. I feel like that Weird. was one of the main deals was what people would be searching Quickster on Twitter and seeing this huge pothead. Just, yeah, uh, that's a, well, like uh, HP when they were when they were still trying to push WebOS, they paid for a hashtag, and yeah. it was like HP something. Everybody thought it was Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> so there's all sorts of like problems with doing that kind of stuff too. <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, anything else you want to say about social network stuff, Ron? Before we wrap up, that was it. It was a good post. Yeah, it was a good post. Um, all right, like so all just, your posts. Yeah, just, just to wrap up real quick. <laughs> only uh, the ones that only the ones that don't hate on Google. Right. <laughs> so this one. Some, some of my favorites. Uh, LG 1080p phone potentially in May already. That rumor's floating around out there. It's kind of crazy. They just announced the uh, Optimus G and Next 4. But, hey, next year is going to be the year of the 1080p phone. Just you watch. Uh, Google Plus reviews in Google Play. 
So none of us apparently messed with these at all until right before the show. But yeah, Google is now tying all App Store reviews to your Google Plus account. So all the old reviews you've ever left, all are just now listed as a Google user. And if you want to review something in the future, it's going to use your Google Plus account. I don't know if I if I necessarily care or not, but at the same time, like, there's not a lot of privacy then. Uh, I mean, like, if you want to leave some anonymous, hateful review, you should be able to do that, shouldn't you? Does anyone have any thoughts on that? No. Like, I, I know, like, there's some, <laughs> like, we were talking about there's some websites that have changed over to Facebook comments just so that everyone has a face and they can't just be a troll, but don't we need to have trolls sometimes? I don't know. No. <laughs> no? You want it to be tied to Google Plus? I don't know. I mean, yeah. It's hard to hard to explain, but like you know, I've been, uh, you know, we've all been trolled. We all work on the internet, and yeah. yada yada yada. So, and being trolled is not fun. Like having people <laughs> having people attack you when you put yourself out there, you know, for the world to see, and then have people attack you or mock you or whatever, you know, and they're anonymous, you know, you don't know them. Yeah, you know, it just it hurts, and you know, for you know, part of the ways it's not fair, but then again. <laughs> Tying it back into Google Play, you know, people should be able to leave reviews, but I don't know if they have to be anonymous. I'm <laughs> sorry. It, it. it was starting to sound like an after-school special there for a second. I'm so sorry. Do we have the NBC The More You Know thing ready? Yeah, well, I was looking at Eric, and he's just laughing at me. But it, may, it makes he's, tro- he's trolling you. You realize that, right? You're being trolled Are you right the now. guy who always leaves hateful comments on my no. posts, Eric? Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, if you, if you have to comment, if you leave a review now and it's attached to Google+, Plus, and I haven't looked into it, but does it leave like your first and last name? Like if I leave a, a review on an app that I think sucks and somebody else thinks it's awesome, now they know who I am and are they going to like track me down on Google+. Well, Plus? I feel like if you have a legitimate complaint about an app, you know, nobody's going to get mad at you. If the app sucks then, and you say that it sucks, then I th- people are just going to agree with you. Yeah, well, I think there's that, but I think too, if like if your main concern is that you don't want other regular people to see your comments on it, you can always just email the developer, and then it's just between yeah. the two of you, and you can do that from any you know email address. So then it's still totally anonymous unless they you know track down your IP, and then they just know who you are. Um, so I uh, I'm not I wouldn't make a big deal out of it like a lot of people did um, for kind of linking it to Google Plus. No, I don't think it's the greatest idea of all time because. You know why exactly do people need to know all of your info and have a link to your profile right from a, a comment on Google Play? I don't get that, but uh, I don't think I'm going to be, you know, uh, picketing Google for it over my privacy or anything like that. If anything, I think you know Google will see the kind of backlash it's gotten and probably add in a setting where it's like, well, if you don't want to link the two, then that's fine, whatever. Maybe yeah. I mean, they added in the the you know so and so plus one this app um, a while ago. Right, which nobody you know agreed to or anything else like that. So I guess we maybe should have seen that coming a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but those only show point. up like if somebody's in a circle or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, but I don't know how so. these co- like we we're all, we sound like really bad Android people. We haven't looked at the, <laughs> how these reviews actually work yet. But <laughs> yeah, I guess oh, I just okay. know, it's two things that nobody right. does: review an app and use Google Plus. <laughs> oh boy, there it is. The Google Plus hatred. You got to be careful about. I hated on Google Plus the last time they released like a promo video and just got ripped apart. I was like, you just don't know about it yet. Well, that's weird because <laughs> it's awesome. no, 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 no. It's it's the only, only, only reason that happens is because people take the side that we're not not on. So yeah. you can trash Google Plus and everyone's oh. like Google Plus is awesome. And then as soon as you say Google Plus is awesome, people are like Google Plus sucks. Or we're just like, getting trolled. Exactly. It's all big. We're just getting trolled all over again. And by we, you mean Eric is trolling all of us. Yes, that's me. <laughs> just just shell like, accounts all over the place. got a hundred accounts. Because <laughs> Eric hates after school specials. He, like, he's okay with people being bullied online. Like, yep. alright, that's cool. <laughs> I am. I am the online bully. <laughs> and of course, the ironic piece of all this, we're using a Google Plus Hangout to do our show. Yes. Oh, don't that's don't because, break the fourth wall. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> if we could do it over Skype, I'm sure we would. Yeah, we can. You just pay like 100 bucks, and you can totally just oh, chat with whoever you want. Oh, worth it. Uh, no, I like this much better. Uh, all right, oh, there so, we go. Here uh, we go. We got a comment that I really want to okay. shout out to Wade County. Google Plus is like a gym membership. Everyone has one, but nobody uses it. Oh, that's oh, good. That's a good one. That was a good that's one. That's a good one. Poor Google Plus. I think people are using Google Plus a lot more, but it's it really is a different type of social network. Like if people go on there and they write like their entire theory of the world, and then people comment about their theory, and 
I guess I don't have time to do that. I don't know. like it's not like quick sharing as much as it is like deep thinking and yeah. Well, the big thing about it too is like like the only reason I have a Facebook really is just to connect with people that aren't on Twitter, like family and friends like that. But right. um, I, my Facebook feed is just my Twitter feed replicated. But you can't really do that with Google Plus in any. You can do it from a browser, but on your on a mobile device, you really can't do that. Which was that was what killed it for me. I was on board, I was ready to go, and then they never enabled that. As far as I know, still haven't really done anything with the APIs where you can mess with that at all. Yeah, which I think so. was really shooting them in the foot because people aren't going to give up. They're not going to give up a bunch of other social networks that they've already invested in just to switch over to Google Plus. That's the, that's not how that works. Yeah, because maintaining multiple social networks is not a lot of fun. Like no. I can do Twitter and Instagram because Instagram just photos. Like any dummy can hang out on. Instagram. Yeah, and you push and you push those together. So you post to Twitter and you're done. That's yeah. that's that's what people want to do. So even even if you did like um, you could do like a link to your Google Plus post, and it would there's some I think it was like a browser extension, and it would post it on Twitter, and then if it was longer, yeah. it just add the link at the end there. That yeah. would have been huge. It would have been great if I could do that. But of course, it, you know, Twitter's got the APIs to do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Although maybe yeah. they would have had well, a user token problem. Yeah, now, right. but <laughs> well, the sky's gonna Real fall bad. when Twitter shuts off Instagram from um, uploading from their app, and it's gonna happen. Twitter is going down that road. They're yeah. shutting everybody I, off. I do feel bad, not to completely change it, but you brought it up, Ron. I feel bad for the Twitter application developers that just I do too. They're all oh, they're huge. all just gonna like go out of business. That sucks. Of, uh, well they can they can stay in business, but they gotta figure out a way to monetize their app after somebody pays for it, Dude. which is near impossible. Yeah. So and, and they have limited growth. It's either I mean, I guess you can make multiple apps, that's an option, I guess. <laughs> yeah, multiple. Version one and version two. It version sucks. I have two. I, that actually made me because I was really they were just starting to get to the point where the third party Android Twitter applications were getting really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they were finally getting up there, good. and then Twitter just killed them off like that. What? Who? Who's gone? Tweet lanes? Are they gone now? Yeah, um, I think they are. And oh, really? Um, I think Boyd, Boyd said Boyd that is. they're not going to be doing any other uh, development. Yeah, well, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense because you pour tons and tons of development into an app, and it and it is like. There, there are a bunch of them out there, but most of them suck. Uh, but I mean, you can't. I mean, if you can't figure out a way to get a continued, you know, way of payment for that, you're pouring in a ton of work for not a lot of, you know, unless you like say like you do like the tweet bot for Mac thing and say twenty bucks. Yeah. But nobody's going to do that, especially on a, especially on a phone. Kellen, we've got a couple people in the chat asking about what happened to Carbon. Ha, Carbon. That? <laughs> they're asking. They're asking us like we would know. <laughs> I don't well, think anybody does. I, was, I, I was following it pretty pretty closely for a while and then it kind of died down and then like every couple weeks they would they would kind of reappear on Twitter and be like yo we're working on it yeah, and then they would a... just go back down and then they would come back and say what they were working on and then they would go back yeah. and they would just every They're time they said that, of Twitter. Yeah, I would go over to Kellen and be like yo hey uh, Carbon's coming <laughs> you and did, it just, you it's this running like, joke yeah weekly updates on that and I don't think that's ever coming out. No, do we? it's done I mean, now. Got, Twitter's killed it. It's over my, now. Yeah, what's the point? Yeah, what a that was a weird thing. And everyone was so excited. There was like a couple of alphas floating around. Everyone's like, I have the alpha. It's so awesome. You guys are just gonna love this Twitter hey, app. And we asked. Died. I sent them an email and asked for the alpha. They didn't they didn't want it. They didn't want it. So no love. It's probably yeah. because it really exists. Yeah, but when you look at when like when it first coming out, you weren't seeing it. like Boyd was maybe there, maybe not. I don't think they were, but they, their WebOS client was good. It was great. I mean, yeah. WebOS was not great, so it was laggy because of WebOS, but the design of it was, was great. I liked, I liked it a lot. Yeah, that's too bad. It's funny you bring up Launcher Pro. Everyone in the chat now is going, Launcher Pro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was thinking about Launcher Pro the other day. I saw Fed on, online. Cause we're, we're GTalk homeboys. But, um, yeah, I hit him up, but he lives, you know, in the Southern Hemisphere. Right. So it's, our schedules are way off. And I wanted to get in touch with him just to do, like, a follow-up interview because I interviewed him way back in the day. Yeah, I remember that one. And, um, yeah, I wanted to kind of do a little rehash and uh, see what he's up to because, I mean, obviously he disappeared. He made a music app and then just... Mm-hmm. It yeah. went to the top of Google Play. Yeah, he pieced out. Think, and then he, he cashed out. out. He was like, see ya. Yeah, it was really, really, really weird. <laughs> so who knows? But every once in a while, he will reply to people. If you look at his Twitter stream, he'll reply to people every once in a while and say, yeah, I'm still working on it. 
you know, he bought oh, a yacht yeah. and he, he, he left. He's I'm out sure. of here. He's definitely he's working like a, on that rewrite. Yeah, he's like right. a mystical oh, creature. Every, like, every month, at least somebody emails us and goes, whatever happened to Launch Pro? You guys should yeah. find out. They want us, to, it, they want us to find out. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was, it was the easily police. the best launch route there. I mean, it, was. Think, it, it was. It was killer. I love that thing. Yeah. yeah. It was good. That's I bought why it twice everyone loved it. Yeah. And it's because I think we all start like all the people that remember Launch Pro were like there from the beginning, right? When Android yeah. first exploded, really, and so everyone still remembers old Fetty. No, you were only there from the beginning if you knew about Hex Launcher. That's what made you part of the in crowd, where it had like well, three, this is, 3D scrolling. This oh, is boy. where uh, that blew my mind. His hipster glasses, right there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, but I mean, he, I mean, when you look at what he did at the time, he was the first one to do the with the widgets where you could uh, re, you know, rearrange the size and everything, which yeah. Google stole, thankfully. Yeah. But, I mean, he, I mean, he, when you look at the stuff that he did, the Twitter widget that was built in there, I mean, he did a lot of really great stuff. And, it was and pretty it, much it worked really of, well. Yeah, it was ahead of his time. I almost think we're ahead of Android's time at least, where it you was. know, yeah. So we we all miss him, but we don't think he's coming back. Yeah, I don't think he's coming back. We'll try people in the chat. We'll try to get like an interview or something with him. I tried. I tried. I'll keep. I'll keep pressing him. Yeah. He's he's on right now. He shows as a way, but uh, <laughs> right. well, we know. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, let's wrap up with. Uh, I just want to talk briefly again about Windows Phone Eight. So I've actually been using this Windows Phone Eight X for a week straight. Like I made it my like everyday phone, and it hasn't been that painful actually. I mean, the app selection sucks. Like there's no games you can play on it because they're either like really crappy puzzle games or you have to pay for them. All the decent games are all paid apps. I don't know if that's Windows developer or yeah, Windows Phone developer saying like no one's going to download this so in order to make one you, we want you to just buy the thing in order to cover our costs or what they're doing. Uh, the app selection is okay and there's like a good Google Voice app, there's a good Twitter app, good Google Reader app. You know, there's no like actual Google apps in there where, but anyone's, everyone's sort of made good third-party apps. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean I was able to go like a week and I haven't had any problems with it. It's actually kind of nice. Um, I do sort of get sick of the super minimal look. I mean, like, I'm a minimal guy, but the minimal, everything's built from just text only, and it's either dark or white. Um, it's sometimes, like, when, even when you're in email, like, when you're looking at your like, email app, it's all black with white text. And when you open an email, it flips to pure white with black text. Like, it flips Ugh. on you, and it, like, blinds you. Yeah. So th there's yeah. definitely some little annoying things about it, but for the most part, like, I, it's pretty good. But the no notification center can't do it. That's just awful. Yeah. Um, multitasking still has issues. Yeah, there's not really good multitasking. There's definitely, like, I think I have a list of stuff. Like, I'm probably going to do some sort of post about what I love and don't love. And then, Ron, I think we're still working on getting you a Windows 1A because you want to go, like, really in-depth with it. But mm -hmm. I'm probably just going to do, like, a preview of my thoughts on it. But, yeah, it's it's cool, It's but it, I, I'm dying to get back to Android. Now that I have yeah. this DNA, I'm like, hello, Android. <laughs> Yeah, that email app though, it, it's it's really the font's super big by default. Like it just everything about it is you can't see a lot on the you know it's, I think you can only see like maybe five or six messages mm -hmm. on there, but and it's super huge text and it's like you've got the screen to do it. Why don't you just make the text smaller so I can actually see what's going on here? Yeah, and they've sort of designed all the like even the good apps that are Windows Phone apps like Evernote and all they all are so they're supposed to be so big and beautiful but there's like you can't see there's no content you have to scroll no. to get to anything yeah you only see like half of it yeah move to the next yeah page. and because everything's like that you can't do a lot of gesture stuff which is a huge problem and every app looks the same which oh that really drives me crazy yeah, I mean, like, they, Android put out these, like, design guidelines, and they're, like, simple guidelines. They just want apps to have, like, navigation bars in the same spot, but they want you to, like, go off on your app and do some cool stuff. With mm -hmm. Windows, yeah, I don't really feel like they're doing that. They want you to have this, like, Metro UI style yeah. with the big text and minimal and swipe yeah. between panels, and that's kind of it. Yeah. yeah, which is, I mean, the first time you use it is great, but and I don't know if that's a limitation with the SDK. I haven't talked to any Windows phone developers about that, so maybe that's a good thing to follow up on. But, you know, like, like Twitter, for example, their app, which you know, whatever you like it, don't like it, but they, you know, they have their own unique design and, and uh, you know, on Android, and, 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 you know, I think that the, it looks good. You know, you may not like the app, but it looks good, and you see a lot of other apps doing that and branching out, um, you know, doing their own thing, but to have the same thing over and over again, it, it, that gets really tiresome for me. Yeah, my first day or so with it, I was like, oh, it's such a beautiful operating system, and now, yeah, after a week, I'm kind of like, I'm sick of the text and everything looking identical, like, give me some spice, do something different, and it just mm -hmm. doesn't ever do anything different. Yeah. Um, have you tried using it with your Xbox? Does, um, okay, it, does so it that, do any that, cool things? Okay, so that's one really annoying thing. Um, 
when, when I logged in first to the phone, I use like an outlook.com account that I created. Like, when uh, that first came out, right? Yeah. And so when you go into the <laughs> Xbox app, it automatically ties to that email address and you can't change it. Oh. So, because my Xbox is tied to a Gmail account, yeah, yeah, yeah. and there's absolutely zero way to change it. So I can't do anything because all my games are on my Gmail. That account. sucks. You can. You can. You, you have to make a so you set up so like your uh, yeah I, I dealt with this too and I I bought, ended up buying apps twice because it was yeah it's a pain in the butt. But what you do because uh, you can make a um, gosh they changed the name a million times Outlook whatever Outlook yeah. Yeah. Um, you can do it with another email address. Okay. Um, so you can see, basically you can you can kind of hack around it so you can get that that same. Or the the alternative obviously would be just to change your Xbox um, email address to the one that you use for your Windows Windows Live account or whatever the heck they call that. Oof. Yeah. For the, I could do that, your yeah. Microsoft account. I'm yeah. I didn't have this phone long enough to worry. But yeah, that was that was sort of a frustrating thing. Cause I was, I was like, Oh, Xbox, let me just play around with this stuff. No. Cause it's all built in. Right. I mean, yeah. there's other apps you could add on to, but there's like a built in games thing that pulls in from your Xbox account. Nope. Didn't work. Tied to my outlook. Oh, do, uh, do games still, um, show up only in the games hub and not in your apps, the app screen when you swipe over? Uh, let me look. I don't even know if I have any cause I couldn't find any good ones. Yeah. I'll have to look and see what I've got to. Well, there's the games hub. I must not have even downloaded any. Like I, I tried to, and then they were all paid, and I was like, "Yeah, I guess I just need to download." One well, you can. I think you can do trial for paid apps, though. Can you still you do can. that? Yeah, yeah, you can do trials. And it's stuff. limited, but then you can at least play with it a little bit. Yeah, so, I don't know. I mean, it's cool. I like Windows Phone eight, but it's not Android. That's for damn sure. It's just not. It's just not as powerful. I mean, it's not. It's it just like even email accounts. Like I use multiple email accounts, like Gmail, right? And in the Gmail app and Android, there's just a little tab, and you just toggle between them all. And you can do a combined inbox on Windows, but I don't want everything f- flooded together. So that especially when it's all text, too. Yeah, yeah, really. So then I have three different or four different icons for different emails, and it's just yeah. There's just there's all these little things that I just now I appreciate more than ever on Android. That's for sure. Yeah. So anyway, we'll talk about that more later. But that's uh, basically the show. Does anybody have anything else they want to add? Any shout outs or anything? No. Uh, yeah, she, hey, mom. Hey, mom. <laughs> that was good. She yeah. she does not watch, but. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. She, she, doesn't, she, she has like an OG she could maybe watch. A Google Plus. No, she, she upgraded. That. She got a Galaxy S3 that she emails hey, me all the time. My mom actually just got a Galaxy S3 too. Yeah. Uh, she's she's like, she's loving it. Although she uses the Kamek, uh, Comic Sans font or whatever. And I'm oh, like, God. what yes. are you doing, woman? Oh, <laughs> oh it hurts. She's, she's unfortunately probably not the only one, which is why they still include that. Uh, in yeah, it's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. Oh, boy. Whatever. All right, well, let's, uh, we're way over. Let's let's wrap it up for the night. So everyone, thanks for joining us again. This is episode seven, Droid Life Show. Yeah, you could watch it as many times as you want. There will be a replay. So, uh, anyways, we'll see you guys later. Peace. Adios. Peace. Bye.